The Tropic Crisis Community Update is an amazing collaborative project with awesome looking maps, great skins, cool SFMs and more. It really is a testament to show how the community can all band together and create something that looks visually appealing and on par with the other community update projects that got accepted into the game. Now that I've got all the positives out the way, it's time for me to actually talk about my biggest concerns with the Tropic Crisis update and why I think in its current state, it shouldn't be copy and pasted into TF2 by Eric Smith. Now don't get me wrong, I fully support the idea of community updates and things like the Mayan project, Frontline and End of the Line were all beautifully executed in their presentation, SFMs and content. I'm simply just sharing my personal opinion about the way this update is being pitched for the game. For this video, I'm only really going to talk about the things on the website, like the SFM trailer and maps, because those are the most significant things for this update. And if I went into everything else in this content pack, this video would be at least two hours long. Anyways, with Tropic Crisis, the biggest thing I've noticed is how much it seems to deviate from the typical format of fan updates, as apparent in the things I mentioned before, which doesn't sound like a bad thing, but is once you really start looking into things like I did. Let's talk about the gameplay, and I'm going to start by looking at the most good looking map, judging by the screenshots in the workshop. Kof Kachiira. Unlike most people who just look at the screenshots and vote, let's actually play on this map. The screenshots for it make it look really good, and I personally love the detailing work present in the pictures. Let's look around the map and... Right off the bat, there is a bit of a Z fighting issue with the door, and these metal door parts aren't attached to anything, and are just floating for some reason. Alongside that, there's this weird surfable glass, which isn't properly clipped, but you know. This is all just stuff that can be easily fixed in the day. So let's just go outside and explore the actual map. The first obvious thing I've noticed is just how much open vertical space there is. For some reason, all the paths to the objective are extremely wide, and there is just a lot of these weird Dust Bowl-esque buildings that don't really serve a purpose other than being cover. These wide open spaces with big sightlines seem to remind me of some kind of map, but I can't put my finger on it. Thanks, mate! Overpowered sniper sightlines are a pretty big issue, but hey, it can be fixed with a simple wall, and at least the trees are clipped off, so you can't hide in them like Sweden. But speaking of Sweden, I guess I spoke too soon. The map doesn't really capture the aesthetic of South America, and for the map, and these ugly, colorful buildings, which I mean, sure, you made the map feel South American, but in the laziest way possible. Some maps being too jungle inferno y was a problem with the theme itself being South America, which you guessed it, is associated with jungles. So I can see why some mappers fell into the trap of making maps which felt too broad. My suggestion will be to look at some films that have the South America feel. CP Overgrown is the poster child for this update, as it's been in all the promotional material, but though I think it deserves that title, eh. I know UEAK Crash worked on this map, but I don't know if you noticed how cramped the last point feels. It's almost junction levels of chokiness, and I reckon soldiers and demos will be delighted to hear this along with NGs. This map, in my opinion, doesn't do nearly as great of a job as the previous one in terms of detailing and staying true to the TF2 art style, with everything just seeming a bit too tacky. It's almost like he told a Counter-Strike mapper to make a TF2 map, and being the Counter-Strike player he is, he would of course make the map like he would for any Counter-Strike game. Small, choky, and deathmatch-like. Not like an average TF2 map that has buildings that are scaled up to fit whole team fights. This, on the other hand, could fit 1-6 to six people before it becomes a choke fest. Aside from the visuals not fitting TF2 as well as I would have hoped, there are these weird walls at the top of the doorways, which just make it easier for demos and soldiers to spam or trap. Alongside that, there are these very weird architectural choices. This map definitely shows its age, since it's from nearly 9 years ago, and honestly, Crash should have just made a new map instead of dragging this relic into a modern TF2 update. CTF Favelia is arguably one of the ugliest maps in this list. Sorry map creator, I know you put your soul into this one, and the game mode concept is an interesting idea, which could play alright, but this map is bad. Remember that analogy I told you before? About a map feeling like if a Counter-Strike player made a TF2 map? You can take that and amplify it by 10, because this map honestly feels like a community Counter-Strike map 
with the detailing making something like Brazil look beautiful in comparison. I can kind of see the theme the map I was going for being run down streets, but it wasn't executed well, and the inclusion of random graffiti drawings which looked like they were made in Photoshop last second did not help with it looking like a Counter-Strike map. I can't really say a lot on how to fix it, as much of the design itself is inherently flawed and would require massive overhauls to fix. A good place to start would be fixing the store being so low, as it's just another overpowered demo man sticky spot, and also making these skybox buildings look better. Hopefully, in its current state, this map won't be added, because it's approaching the territory of what build levels of bad design. Not a map which everyone loves playing on, PL Embargo. This map is pretty unique for a couple of reasons. Which is a first for TF2 There definitely needs to be some work done regarding the detailing. In some parts, it's okay, and in other parts, it's bad. This waterfall, for example, could be semi-transparent and use a slightly different flowing water texture to actually look like water flowing from a waterfall. Another questionable choice, just like the background music, is the voice acting. I can tell the voice actor for Red was trying his best, but it just sounds more like Wario streaming into the mic than anything of a cartel boss. <laughs> Amigos, welcome to my paradise island. You will not be enjoying your stay today because you've got work to do! Blue's announcer just sounds like a redneck girl for some reason, but voice acting in this map is something that needs to be improved. And at the time of making this video, the map creator is doing something for it. So you can let me know in the comments if it's good or bad. My biggest gripe with this map is really just the colorful rainbow buildings everywhere that should be toned down a little. It's just weird seeing all these rainbows everywhere in a map that is meant to be on the same standard as other TF2 payload maps. This map just needs an overhaul in terms of design and that would pretty much fix most of the problems with this map. Other important things would be fixing this frontier payload cart as the truck just awkwardly tries to stay off the platform meant for capture and at some points can just fully detach and rotate 90 degrees which seems to be partly because of the map's layout in the truck stage of the map. At least the payload explosion seems interesting, and the hybrid payload vscript game mode is an interesting concept which should be explored in future maps. If the mapper chooses to overhaul the design and fix a couple of problems like background music, voice acting, and the frontier cart, it would make it passable as a viable map for TF2. Now it's time for, in my opinion, one of the best looking maps for this community update. But, unlike the rest, it doesn't follow the theme for a South American map. This feels more Alpine and North American than anything. By now, it's really just a repeat of what I've said before, like, detailing needs some work, OP sniper sightlines, and weird choke placement. So I'll try to make this interesting. There are some things I like about this map, like the idea to make a payload stage the size of Gold Rush, and some of the experimental game mechanics are cool, but honestly, gimmicks aside, this map does need work, and gameplay should always prioritize gimmicks. In stage 2, blue spawn is alright, apart from this weird, thick, alien blue fog, and these resupply cabinets. These cabinets are placed right next to the doors, which on paper doesn't sound like a bad thing, but it is once you consider how easy it is to short circuit spam and projectile spam from just hugging these resupply cabinets. The first spawn area seems to be really inspired by Thunder Mountain, except there are huge sniper sightlines directly at the doors, which can be easily fixed by using the Thunder Mountain fence approach. Unlike the first stage, this map is bigger, but still struggles with sizing as the points are so incredibly close to each other. These ramps causing the payload to slide down automatically are cool, but I don't know if Blue should be given such a big advantage right off the bat, when you already consider how much of an advantage Blue already has for the first few points in any payload map. The ramps aren't necessary for the most part, and are just not a gimmick this map has, and the mapper should really calm down with spamming these ramps, because they are everywhere. Also, just like we've talked about before, there are low ceilings, which make demo sticky traps very overpowered, like they weren't overpowered enough before. In this part of the map, you can easily get trapped into the wall with no effort at all. 
Just ride the cart and don't crouch once you're about to hit the wall and you're stuck. This ties in with the low ceilings problem and can be easily fixed by just moving the ceilings up and hammer or by moving the displacements down. Typically in payload, the last point is always heavily biased towards red, but this time, maybe a bit too much. I know the map was trying to balance things out by adding these incline ramps with just a little bit of flat rail to not make it completely like Sisyphus, but in my opinion, it should just be one lesser steep ramp. Red Sport is right over there. Overall, this map isn't bad, but one thing that actually triggered me is that the payload cart ending isn't very interesting, and that's the best part out of any tier 2 map. I was honestly expecting an explosion or something, but the payload just goes into a shipping container and that's it. Maybe if the map wants to make an actually cool gimmick, they can make the truck attach the container move, so we the players can at least have some form of satisfaction for pushing the cart all this way, but that's basically it for this map. Quick editor's note, while I was making this video, the mapper released a third stage for this map, and I've already finished the script, so I can't really go too much into depth, but it's alright. This map definitely has the best chances of getting into the game, through the form of a seasonal patch, because for the most part, its layout and game mode is executed decently, and doesn't feel like a boring copy of Selbien. My complaints are roughly the same as the ones for the other maps in the update, like the buildings are too colourful, which is kind of understandable because Salvador is a pretty colourful place, but I still think it can be toned down a little bit, since in some parts it's a bit obnoxious. This map honestly isn't that bad when you compare it to every other map in this list, and Vscript is used nicely here. A few more nitpicky things is that the control point can be capped from upstairs in this building while the truck is still coming out, which I don't know is intentional or not, but it's not a huge deal. The detailing for this map is alright, and in some parts could be done better, but hey, at least the rest of the map is not as bad as that boring skybox with stretched textures and flat islands. Dungle Inferno did this whole vast ocean environment before pretty well, and in my opinion, this just feels like a cheap knockoff version of it. Overall, this map would be as fun as all the other play destruction maps, but my problem with it is more on the colors and theme of the map instead of the detailing this time. If I didn't make it abundantly obvious before, I don't hate community workshop updates, and I'm not trying to hate on all the effort put in from the massive team that worked on it. But I believe in its state right now, it shouldn't be fully ported to the game. I don't think things like the maps should be ported as in their current states, they aren't really possible when compared to previous updates like last year's summer. The moral of the story is, keep on making workshop submissions for the game, but always be sure to get valuable feedback so you can improve on your work. As always, have a good one.